Welcome to What Are You Reading? This week or month, we're going to be asking Paul what he's reading. So, Paul, what are you reading? I am currently reading uh, The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis. Um, I've just finished The Confessions of St. Augustine, uh, all of which sounds very spiritual of me, except that I'm actually reading through the Harvard Classics Library, and uh, that just happens to be where I am at the moment. Um, the next volume is Greek Plays. Um, What's the name of this volume? Uh, just Early Christian Writing. Um, and uh, I, I infinitely prefer The Imitation of Christ to The Confessions of St. Augustine. Um, Thomas Akempis was a 15th century monastic writing to other 15th century monastics. It's a, a very uh, practical, pragmatic book, um, just kind of about the uh, Christian life and focusing uh, one's attention on God and the things of the Lord rather than the things of the world, or at least so far that seems to be the matter. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Now, over the last several weeks, you have been reading Augustine, yes. and you complained a lot. Yes. You actually almost gave up on your big project, as I recall, I don't, because of Augustine. I don't think I actually, at any point, was going to give up on it. I stalled significantly. Um, it took me almost four months to read 300 pages, and I'm not sure I can remember a time in my entire life that that's happened. Um, Augustine is, Augustine was very slow reading for me, and it wasn't a matter of translation, it wasn't a matter of uh, difficult language or concepts, it was simply a matter of repetitiveness, um, his, uh, it, 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 the text is written to God as a confession, and it is just heavy laden with genuflection and uh, quoting scripture uh, back at God, which is a fine and good thing to do. Um, it also so happens that I didn't uh, completely agree with the man's worldview. Um, I liked him quite a bit. I had the niggling suspicion that he probably would not like me. Um, he did tend toward the legalistic. He uh, was reacting to a Gnostic heresy that he came out of, and um, I get the impression that he threw a bit of the baby out with the bathwater uh, in his Including form. his own son. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Yeah. And, um, yeah, quite literally, I guess. Um, another difficulty for me was that he... Um, had a very early view of, um, very early understanding of the world, um, and he talked about time, and uh, I'm going to get in trouble here, but he talked about creation uh, very much with a um, understanding, scientific understanding of the 300s, um, which could be a little bit frustrating uh, to my modern eye. Uh, it was a profitable experience. Um, I see where a great deal of early Christianity and early Western civilization was formed by the thinking of the man. However, I have grave doubts that I will ever pick up Augustine again. Now, you read from my copy, as I recall. Yes. And you could see my dog ears and my underlining. I'm curious, as you know, I told you when I read Augustine, I stalled, and it is one of the few books um, particularly Christian works that I've not finished. Yes. That I've started, and I started enthusiastically. How would you say, I think I stalled about two-thirds or three-quarters of the way through. Where did you, your stall happen in relation to mine? Um, at a similar point, you stalled uh, where the biographical portion terminated, and after that it is purely speculating on the nature of time and creation. Um, which was one of the more difficult sections for me. Um, I did stall some in the biographical portion as well, though. Um, it's just not a very driving uh, 
narrative voice. Yeah, there's a lot of um, uh, soul picking that right. I found very burdensome and heavy. But now, now compare him with Thomas Akempis. Uh, Thomas Akempis uh, is vastly different because he is, um, at least so far in my reading, um, merely giving direction uh, and encouragement, and he is speaking to uh, other readers. Um, monastics is are, are, would be his target audience. Um, however, I think that it applies to any Christian, and um, he talks a great deal about avoiding the worldly, about uh, solitude and silence and meditation, and uh, um, focusing on the things above, storing up treasure in heaven. Um, very practical um, and very lovely. Um, he, he, he has a, a kind voice that uh, that I, I feel really comes through. Um, so you're encouraged. I'm encouraged and I like him and I like taking this walk with him. Um, so I think that's what what I'm appreciating about it um, so much. Uh, and uh, moving on, I am also reading uh, Warren Buffett Invests Like a Girl, um, a book from uh, The Motley Fool by Luann Lofton. Uh, it is a book that uh, talks about investing. It talks about um, how, statistically speaking, women are more inclined to um, invest over long term, not get scared by bearish markets and sell up, and um, how, uh, statistically speaking, women are more likely to uh, investigate what they're investing in um, a lot more, learn as much as they can, uh, read extensively, all of which are characteristics of Warren Buffett's investing. Um, I am not an investor. Um, I, I have a, a very small uh, uh, 401k, uh, or IRA, rather. And, um, oh, and a little bit of stock. And, and, a, li stock. and a little bit of stock, um, <laughs> but nothing serious. I, I, I'm, I'm strictly an armchair uh, economist enthusiast. Uh, I, I, I'm fascinated by economics. Um, and I, uh, The Motley Fool has several um, venues. Uh, they have books, they have uh, reports, they have uh, podcasts and radio shows. And um, They're very entertaining, surprising. They are, and they're one of my favorite um, podcasts. I uh, like the point of view of speaking to those interested in investing getting economic news from that point of view. Um, I think that there's um, a lot of information to be gleaned uh, in that way than your traditional uh, news source business uh, column. And um, so I'm, I'm, in, I'm enjoying this quite a bit. Um, and on top of that, there's, um, I feel like there's some life lessons to gain from uh, studying something like that on, on uh, prudence and on uh, wisdom and uh, patience, uh, all of which are virtues that I think one would do well to cultivate. Um, one that we haven't talked a whole lot about, um, but not, I, not at all. I, I've been uh, having sit next to my computer for the past few weeks is uh, the works of Andrew Marvell. Uh, Andrew Marvell was a contemporary and um, colleague of John Milton. Um, he was not a Puritan, but he was sympathetic to the Puritans and uh, against censorship. He lived through that whole uh, Cromwell period that uh, Milton lived through as well. And um, his satires and prose works were far more popular in his own day, um, but his verse is, uh, I find it transcendent. He was one of the medical, med medical, metaphysical poets, um, and he, uh, he, he, there's just such an elegance to his uh, attention to form. Uh, it's seamless. One doesn't even notice the form. It's, it's, it's uh, really quite beautiful, and uh, I'm enjoying um, digging into that and learning lessons about language and form uh, from Andrew Marvell, um, a complete uh, I've never, heard, I've never heard of him. Oh, really? No. Oh, fantastic. Um, 
the metaphysical poets uh, were um, a small movement in uh, Britain uh, in the 1600s, and uh, they were uh, th the term metaphysical poet was originally kind of an insult um, to talk about these metaphysicals, uh, and uh, would not have been appreciated at the time. But John Donne, I believe, is in the same group, um, and a few others. Uh, was he a devout man, Andrew Marvell? Um, Yes and no. Uh, <laughs> some of his poems are particularly secular in their matter, um, but uh, as I said, he was very much sympathetic to the Puritans, um, personally. But um, those are the three books that I am reading right now. Well, thank you. Thanks thank for you. That. And thank you for uh, joining us, and uh, we shall see you next time.